No. 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 Ugh. Have you guys seen the price of boring heads lately? No? Well, I guess today, we're just gonna have to go ahead and make our own. Now, let's face it, boring heads are commercially available. And other than this being a really fun project or a good way to improve my skills, I actually have a very valid reason why I'm gonna need one of these for myself. And that is boring the hole in the project vise. Now, as much as I would love to chuck this up in the forge or in the lathe, I don't think the lathe would like that very much. But why a boring head and not just a comically oversized drill bit, I hear you ask? Well, that's because I'm going to need a counter bore for the thrust washers to seat against. On the back side of that hole, which is going to be pretty hard to do with one of these. I'm kind of imagining something a little overly elaborate and complex, like this. This is going to be a two-part design. So basically I've got 20 mil R8 collet and I've got a collet held boring head. So this should allow me to get both the advantages of a simplified design and a lot more clearance. Let's get to it then. But of course, to start, we're gonna need just a few basic items. Kinda like these. Not much, just, you know, the usual machinist's fare. Oh boy, did I just bite off more than I could chew?
And now to address a problem that has been bugging me pretty much the entire project, and that is this crazy hole, which does not line up with the main bore of the dial here. But I just couldn't bring myself to start up again. So I've made these tiny little brass plugs, which I'm now gonna put in. Probably shouldn't have used stock with a hole in it in the first place. Okay, so that was quite a doozy of a project, but I gotta say, the one thing that really was the star of the show was this collet block. If I needed to, I could index apart both vertically to do all of these features once I got the dovetail established. Then, luckily, I was able to do this whole part in one setup as well. You guys saw me cut these two grooves, be able to clock it again perfectly 90 and then do these little grub screw holes. And normally I would have wanted to have done this on the lathe, but the setup was actually so good, provided I indicated on the main body and not the side body, that I was able to do these bores pretty damn accurately and they are pretty well in center. I spun this up on the lathe and I can detect no visible runout. Now the reason I say to always indicate off the main body is because oftentimes these features may not be perfectly in line. Now to be fair, oh I have this on backwards. It would have been a lot more accurate if I'd actually used like a coaxial indicator, but I was really just indicating with a normal little edge finder. And that actually worked pretty well. In the end though, there was quite a bit of material to take off, off of this OD, but I've actually got a pretty good matchup here between these two faces. Anyway, this thing is clean. Let's now put it together. A little dab of oil to assemble. There we go. Done. Finally.